Howdy guys, welcome to the Git Bash customization part two. In this session, we will be transforming our default Git Bash from this to this, or even one of these. So keep watching. All right, before we start, uh, just a quick recap of the part one. So in part one, we saw that the default uh, Git Bash prompt settings are stored in a file called git prompt.sh inside a variable called ps1. We also saw that by uh, customizing or tweaking the PS1 variable value, you can actually customize your uh, default Git Bash prompt and the window title. I also recommended uh, in the last part that how you should configure or where you should store your customization. So rather than uh, modifying or tweaking the original or the default Git prompt.sh file, you should actually go for a user config. So we looked at uh, how we can create a custom user config for Git Bash by using the XDG. And of course, by storing our customization into a custom user config file, we can actually make it sticky so that on successive launches of the Git Bash, your customization gets into effect, your settings are retained. So I have put all my notes into a um, GitHub gist and I'll be walking through these notes uh, in this video. So you are welcome to visit this gist and uh, you know make a reference whenever you want. All right, so moving on, in part two, uh, we would see how we can uh, use the automatic commands rather than hard coding the values in the PS1 string. We will also see how to set background and foreground colors for your shell prompt, which we didn't cover in the last part. And then we will move on to installing the Minty theme on top of our customization and you will see how it looks. I would also recommend a couple of uh, dev fonts which would go nicely with your Git Bash. All right, so without any further ado, let's uh, move on. So let's start by launching the current default Git Bash without any customization. This is how it looks. And as shown in the part one, we'll be putting our customized git prompt.sh in this folder. So I would recommend if you haven't visited the part one, please, uh, you know, have a look at that. That would help you in progressing this video. Now, in order to save time, I have already prepared another version. I will just simply copy the another version which I prepared using these automatic uh, characters for PS1. So let's copy this into another file. So on your left hand side, this one is the file which we prepared in uh, part one. And on your right hand side is the file which we are gonna implement in the part two of this. Now, before we walk through the second version of the file, let's see what characters you can use. So this is a list of the special characters as we mentioned. We're gonna use some of these uh, rather than hard coding the stuff. Of course, we can hard code a little bit, uh, but it's best to you know keep them automatic. Secondly, how to specify the background and foreground colors. And here is how you do it. So basically the start of a color scheme is, is prefixed with this. And the end of the color scheme is marked as this. So you can, or you can also use instead of slash E, you can also use uh, 033 which is the same thing and same wise for for the ending as well you can use 033 0m or slash e 0m so this is how you enclose your color scheme between these two tags if you like so here is an example with gray background and black text so as you can see we are starting with a slash e and we are ending with a slash e 0m which marks the end of all formatting and in between these tags you will put your color code for foreground and background. Now in this gist, I've also included the color codes towards the end of the article. So here you can see the color code, 16 bit color code. Similarly, if you if you want to use a 256 color scheme, then these are for foreground 256 and these are for background. So these are the codes we're using. So in our example here, if you see we're using a 16 bit color scheme, so 3047. So let's go to, so 30 is the foreground, which is black and 47 is light gray background in this example. So foreground and background 47. 
So this is how you specify uh, the foreground and background color. Now, in case you're not happy with the 16 color scheme, you can go for 256. But in that case, um, changes a little bit. How you specify um, the tags remain the same, slash E and slash E0M for a 256 color scheme. However, for specifying the color, you have to prefix an extra 38.5 before your color number for the foreground text and 48.5 before your color number for the background if you're using a 256 color scheme. So let's look at this example, which is using a 256 color scheme. So default background, so that means we are not specifying any color for the background, but we are specifying the color for the foreground, which is a green text. So if you see here, 35.5 is a prefix, 82M is actually the code uh, for green text. And similarly for the next part, of the text we're using 198M prefix with the 38.5 specifying that this is a foreground color. Now if you're very picky about colors you can even combine a 16-bit and 256 color scheme together into one string. Here's an example for that. So 38.5 which specifies the foreground color followed by the 256 color scheme 82 which is for the green text and uh, 40 is the color code for Black, back, black background from the 16-bit color scheme. And same here, 48.5 is the background color followed by the 256 color scheme and 30 and 30 is the foreground color. So yeah, it's a bit, bit complicated, but you, you only have to do it once. So that covers how to specify the colors in your PS1. So now let's look at our uh, customization in the file. So this is a new file. So the first line, which is the title of the window, we are using a hard-coded git, then followed by a bash, again hard-coded, and we're using slash v, which is special character. So let's look at what is the slash v for, is the version number for the bash. So it will automatically uh, put a version number for the bash. Then followed by a slash h, uh, which is for host, as you can see here here the host name and then followed by the directory name the present working directory name by slash w should be here the base name with a capital w so that gives us a kind of sort of automatic title of the window now moving on there's a new line character we leave it there now here we have started we have started specifying the colors which we didn't do in the part one of the video in but in the new version we'll be specifying the both the foreground and the background colors along with the automatic uh, characters so let's see what we got here we are specifying the start of the we are specifying the start of the color scheme by slash e and followed with a pair of colors which is 30 47 uh, which is foreground and background 30 is the foreground 47m is the background followed by slash a which is a control sequence for the current time so we are preparing uh, our prompt here, starting with the real time. Uh, then we insert the user. Again, the color scheme, which starts with slash E and 97104M. These here I'm using the 16 bit color scheme. So there are just, uh, you know, uh, a pair of colors, 97 and 40 followed by U, which is for username. Similarly, moving on, we again, another color followed by a slash H is host and another color scheme for the current working directory so you can keep on going like this using all these or even hard coding whatever you want and forming your ps1 desired string now the rest of the file here we will leave it as as it is because in part one of the video we have already explained uh, where all this has come from the rest of the file contents and we need to keep them as it is the only important bit here is the git functions uh, which is which has been specified here so this basically is a git function uh, which basically you know required for your git command so we must keep it here and if you want you can change the color for this by again specifying a slash e and the color scheme you want so this gives color these two lines will give the color to the git functions which you will see on the shell prompt whether master branch or whatever branch uh, you are into now you must be wondering that we have started with the 
opening of the color scheme but we never ended the color scheme well the thing is actually it is ending here if you see so it, it is resetting all the formatting again and it is using instead of slash e it is using slash 033 so uh, if you see closely you would see a beginning of the ps1 string where the formatting is starting here and it is ending here in between we've got all the color codes we want so we have now prepared our second version of the git prompt shell containing our customization even for the foreground colors the background colors and some automatic uh, commands for inserting the text so let's overwrite our existing or or the previous git prompt.sh with this new one so i'll copy this here and let's save time for the truth let's uh, relaunch our git bash and see how it looks here you go so this is the one which was the default one without any customization then in the part one we did the, some customization and we made it like this and this is our new one so as you can see we have uh, rather than hard coding the window title here we have inserted some uh, commands which are automatically fetching us the bash version the git or whatever hard coded text if you want still there and we have uh, successfully changed our prompt to insert the time uh, the name, username, the host name, and your present working directory, followed by the git functions, which will appear if we go to a repository, as you can see, so it's specifying that we are into master branch. Now, of course, it's it looks quite better than the what we originally had, but it's still nowhere near to what we wanted. So let's improve this further. What you can do now is we will install Minty themes and it will totally change the look and feel of this current bash prompt. Let's head on to this URL. All the URLs and will be included in the video description. So you can note it from there. And let's download this code here. Let's extract it. If you navigate to this folder Minty, you will see a lot of uh, themes, around 250 or 372 themes in there. So let's import them into our git bash and for doing that, go to your user home directory, create a folder called dot minty. Inside the dot minty, create another folder called themes. Uh, let's do this now before that let's uh, let me show you if you go to the options and if you go to themes you will just have you know five six or ten themes at the most now these will this list will get bloated with all the 272 themes as soon as we put the themes into that folder so let's go there themes now copy all the themes from your downloaded folder into this done now let's launch the git bash once again and let's navigate to master now open the options and under the themes you will see all your minty themes all 270 plus themes in here now, as soon as you select any one of these, it will override uh, the colors you have chosen. So let's uh, try a few of them. So there are hundreds of options literally. Now, this is the one I'm using. Um, yeah, before that, I have, um, if you, I have specified some of my favorite uh, minty themes in the gist again so these are the top four which i like so let's try this one first which is harmonic dark 256 harmonic dark 256 yep yeah, that's the one apply save and now it looks quite different one more thing you can so it looks quite better much better so if you see we started from from there to here 
to here. Of course, it's much better than what we originally had. Now we will improve. We will make one more improvement in here. We will choose uh, our depth font and it will drastically improve the look and feel. So go to options. Again, uh, you can go to my gist and you will see I've recommended four fonts here. These are very nice depth fonts. So we'll choose one of these. We'll go to the text font select. Now I like uh, Roboto. So you select Roboto Mono. Yep, let's increase the size to let's say 10 and save. So that gives you a much better looking Git Bash prompt now. Now you can further improve one more thing. Every time you launch the window size, uh, let's make it sticky. So let's say this is the size I want. So what you need to do is again go options and terminal sorry window and if you click on the current size so whatever size you have on the screen now it will fill those values here and then apply so let's launch it again and see the same window size you go let's try a few commands so here is your new transformed git bash prompt uh, bear in mind you've got 272 options from the Minty themes. So I think it will be very hard to make up your mind on one. But well, again, I have uh, chosen this one. So that covers our customization for our Git Bash. And one more thing before we sign off, just wanted to show you the online PS1 generator. So in the last video, uh, in, the, in the part one, I showed you this online PS1 generator. But recently I found another PS1 generator. This is again online and it is better because it has got, you know, option of specifying the colors, foreground and background. The earlier uh, online generator, this one, didn't have the option of uh, specifying the colors. So I would recommend if you guys want to, you know, uh, need some help generating your PS1 prompt, you can use uh, this online generator. So that's one last thing I wanted to show you. So enjoy your new avatar for Git Bash. That's all for today, guys. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.